close to the gap um, and the strategies that are in place to, to achieve that and um, recognising that it's you know, economic environment and life choices that are causing them um, the gap to be there in the first place. And one intervention is we to put in place when we're looking at things like smoking and alcohol use, or genetics are said there regarding other interventions that are causing that. And my real concern is that we don't do the same thing and get the same results all the time, you know, and we start thinking outside the box and look at new strategies that are going to really make an effect and scrutinise that that gap is closing. And I do appreciate what you're saying here regarding um, that gap closing where, where men are concerned, but it's growing again with women, uh, women you know. Um, so I, I really want to um, look at that really so that we can have the right strategies in place, maybe looking at what we do in other countries, you know, benchmarking against against other countries and how we can actually um, close that gap as quickly as possible, you know, recognising the economic constraints on that, you know. I was looking at also, um, I know I mentioned that one of the other committee meetings regarding the e-cigarette. Um, have, have we got any more information regarding the e-cigarette and is it is it harmful? Does it help? people to, to pack in uh, smoking, is there any legislation regarding can it be banned on public transport, can it be banned, it, is, it, is it under the smoking legislation, do we need to do more work on that?
Council on Monday when we're talking about what sort of discussions you have with people at the licensing department in relation to that plan. And I don't know if you want to take a second question now. I think we have a couple of minutes. 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 I think we have a couple of min